Hey, I forgot to turn the microphone on. Sorry, but uh, there's other audio. I hope you enjoy that. Bye. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Spearhead Sundays podcast episode. I don't fucking know. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I'm enjoying my, a bit of bit of a drink from my official Spearhead Sundays mug, available on Patreon, and you get an extra episode of this shit once a week. Um, right. I, it's obviously, I just need to talk about it, need to address the fucking obvious, especially if you're on the YouTube version. I don't know if anyone will be watching the video version after what I've done to myself, or, well, after what you have done to me. Quick recap, I made a big call on uh, the Luke and Lewis show, saying that if I hit a thousand subs on Twitch, I would dye my hair blue. Now, two things here are true. That's amazing that that, that has happened, but fuck, it's terrible, okay? Love, love the support, hate the outcome, right? Like I said in my video, I'm grateful, but I'm hateful, okay? Uh, because I look like a fucking dickhead. I don't know, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm in two minds about it at the moment. I'm kind of coming around. I'm kind of hating it. That's uh, that's where I'm at. I've uh, I've, I've styled it. It's, it's become a little bit less bright from, the, from day one. Every time I wash it, the water is blue. Every time I have a shower, the fucking water is blue. So, look, I don't know what to think about it. But uh, I, I think I'm getting used to it. I don't love it. I'm getting used to it, okay? This is the this is the best I've managed to do with it style-wise. I've worked out that that kind of fully slicking it back like I used to do doesn't work anymore because right, I had to bleach the hair first. You can't go from brown to blue. You got to bleach it first. So we also worked out that uh, that the the dyeing shit, it's a little bit difficult to dye the roots properly. So what's happened is is you can't really tell looking at it like on the video, but close up in person and maybe in some photos on Instagram, you can see that the 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 absolute base of the hair, right, is actually not blue. It's it's bleached, right? So it's it's almost invisible. So it's actually making me look like I'm going bald. <laughs> it looks like I'm losing my hair all around the front of my hairline because you can't see it. It's because it's not blue, right? So it in photos and shit, it looks like my hairline starts like six inches back from where it actually is. It's not good. And, you know, I don't need any help with that because as we all know, as I've said many times before, I am not going bald, okay? I argued with people in my own fucking Discord, the people who watch me the most, the Patreon supporters... I had a fucking argument with these cunts. They all said that I was going bald. I posted a photo. Here it is. I'm not going bald, okay? I have a widow's peak and a massive forehead. If you're going to roast me, get it right. I'm not bald. I'm Vegeta, okay? My hairline hasn't fucking moved. My grandfather, who's in his 70s, hasn't lost a single hair. Full head of hair. My dad... 50 plus, hasn't lost any of his hair. Everyone on mum's side, everyone has their fucking hair. It's not in my genes. I'm not losing it. I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not fucking moving, all right? My hairline is helm's deep. You can't fucking move that shit. I will repel all invaders, okay? It hasn't moved. The issue is I have a widow's peak and a massive billboard forehead, okay? Get that into your fucking brain. I posted a photo in the fucking Discord. Everyone was saying, no, you are losing it. I said, cunt. I posted a photo from 2012 versus me now. Close-up photos. Hasn't moved. Eight years, bro. Get over it. Not going bald. Definitely going blue. You know, I definitely look like it now. Because this fucking, this bleach stuff, uh, it's like, uh, it's not blue at the base, it's white. So it looks like it's, fu- I don't know. I'm getting used to it. Every time I look at my, I, for, for like three days there, every time I would look at myself in the mirror, I would be reminded what I've done to myself. I kept forgetting. Because, you know, it's fucking hair. I've never dyed it. I've, I've, and I've had the same hairstyle for years now. So I'm looking in the mirror every time. It's like a shock to me. It's fucking electric blue. It's barely blue. It's like turquoise. It's like neon blue. It's the, the fucking bluest dye. This is what I get for letting Jazz pick the fucking hair dye, bro. Uh, but I'm, tr- I'm trying to get used to it. I'm sure that you guys will have to get used to it. But uh, I haven't left the house yet. The f- day one, when I had my blue hair, 
literally, this is how I left the house. I usually go get a fucking coffee and go for a walk, try and start my mind and figure out what kind of dick jokes I'm going to make. Oh, how can I make staying home for six months funny in a different way? What should I talk about today? To be honest, this blue hair is the most exciting fucking thing I've done all quarantine. Literally. Literally the most exciting thing I have done. And I know, I'm not talking American literally. I go, oh my god, that blue thing is literally red. It's like, bitch, you don't know what that word means. I, I'm talking actual in reality. This is the most exciting thing I have done since the start of the fucking year. Since quarantine. Right? You know what's 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 bad too is that in Melbourne it's it's uh, complaining about it is getting less and less relatable because we're the only fucking seems like we're the only people still in prison. Everyone else is either beaten it or given up. It's it's only Melbourne that is trying to fucking pull themselves out of the depths, locking everyone down, trying to beat this thing. It's like everyone else either beat it, New Zealand, Perth, or they they tried kind of hard. And then they just were like, you know what? Fuck it. Let them die. Like, that's America's response, you know? Or France. They're like, oh, I love all the cunts on Twitter going, lockdowns don't work. They don't fucking work. Daniel Andrews is a dictator. Meanwhile, we went from 700 cases all the way down to like, what? It was, yesterday it was one. France is up to 25,000. Okay, boomer. Anyway. I'm sorry for taking it out on random Facebook commenters. I'm angry because I have blue hair. I, I left the house the first the first day I've had blue hair. I haven't left the house since. It's been, it's been three days since then. I have not left the house. And not because of quarantine. I just literally... I just, I just don't want to have the conversation. You guys all know. My friends all know. No context needed. We all have a laugh. I don't want to have those fucking conversations... With people at the cafe that I go to, the bakery, the fucking supermarket, the flower shop. I don't want to have any of that shit with people that don't know what I do. Because my, my favorite shit, dude, is, is people not knowing that I'm a comedian. Right? You People who know me and who, who are fans of what I do, I love talking to them. But it's, it's annoying talking to people who just who have no idea who you are and then they find out... You're a comedian. I imagine it's it's the same as... I, I bet pilots don't, like, fucking tell... Oh, so... Uh, can I... I here's, um, if you're a pilot... Oh, so... Uh, does me using my phone actually make, make, make it dangerous? Like, I bet you get asked that every fucking day. I tell people I'm a comedian. They start laughing at everything that I'm saying for some reason, even when I'm not trying to be funny. When I be a little bit funny, they ramp it up to 11 because they're like, Oh, he's a comedian. It must be hilarious. Oh, oh, do you ever get any bad hecklers? Can you tell me a joke? Have you ever, like, bombed before? Have, what if you go up and tell a joke and, and, like, it doesn't go well? I could never do that. I don't know how you do it. Like, it's, it's, it's the same conversation on repeat with a little bit of do you play basketball, okay? It's like, I get it. I have an interesting job. I can't complain about it. It's better than working in a fucking coal mine. But still... I, I can, I, two things can be true, this is awesome, that sucks, I'm grateful but I'm hateful, okay? I think that's my motto in life. I kind of said it in, in, in a video uh, and uh, just I just ad-libbed it because I was like, oh, that came up with it in my head and, and I kind of like that, you know? I'm grateful but I'm hateful. That's that's 2020, you know? That's that's the lockdown. I'm grateful that, we're, that we have a government that's trying to fucking beat this thing but I'm very hateful because we have a... Government that's trying to keep us in our house. It's awesome, but it sucks. I think that's what people need to fucking agree on. It's like, lockdown, it's not good. It's a bad thing. It sucks, right? But also, the result will be good. And it, and I feel like it is necessary. I hope that it's not going to go for the rest of the year. I hope that once they let us out, if the cases start going back up, I think we need to quit and go, you know what, we try. I think we need to pull in America here and just be like, look, old cunts, fat cunts, people with no immune system cunts, stay the fuck home. We tried. We're on that. We tried. We tried being safe. Now we're playing COVID roulette. I don't want to have those conversations. I'm really. I'm in a fucking tangent mode. Ten minutes. I've talked about six things. Finished nothing. None of them. 
I don't want to have. I haven't had. I haven't gone outside and had the like acquaintances shit with the blue hair. I went out once with the blue hair. Literally, this is how I went out. Okay, I had a cap on and a mask, but you could still see my fucking hair. And because I haven't had a haircut in like I don't know four, five, maybe even six months. I don't even know. Uh, I my side, my I look like I look like fucking Rick from Rick and Morty. Rick Sanchez hair sticking out the sides, right? I look like fucking Krusty the Clown in a hat. For some reason, putting a hat on makes the blue hair more obvious. So I was like, well, fuck, that doesn't. That doesn't help me at all. So I decided to, uh, I went in with the hat on, the face mask on, and then I put a hood on top of the hat. You couldn't see shit. You could only see my eyes. I walked into every store like I was going to fucking rob the joint. You know? I think that if I saw me, some six foot eight guy, masked up, cat, hood, if I saw me, I would be scared. But then if I saw me and I noticed just a glimpse of neon blue hair, I would think, oh great, well, it's, it's, it's going to be the first mass shooting Australia's had in a couple of decades. Great, of course it happens in Frankston. That's what I would think. And I am me. So I guess that'll be next week's episode. Me fucking yelling about what other people think of the blue hair. I'm, I'm kind of getting used to it. It's, uh, it's, it's becoming normal to me. I don't love it. But I don't. I no longer hate it. But when I got it done, I hated it. I was in a bad mood for two days. Even Jazz was like, "Lewis, you you ne- you need to realize that this is funny." I said, "Yeah, it's funny for you. It's it's only funny for other cunts, right? It's funny every time you see me. But then the cameras turn off, and it's just my life, right?" I'm just going to walk around with fucking neon blue hair looking like an absolute dickhead. I get enough people staring at me. Oh, that guy's cool. That guy's fucking tall. Oh, he looks like a fucking dickhead. What's he done to his hair? That's that's the thing. Like, this this joke is going to be funny for uh, maybe, maybe two more days from now. Right? I've done a video on it. Hilarious. I posted a couple of photos. Pretty funny. I do the podcast. Kind of funny. Now, I'll do a stream on Monday. People, I'm sure, roast me in a funny way. And then, it's just my life. And that's it. There's nothing funny about the hair anymore. It's just something that we all have to fucking deal with. Okay? So, look. I... I am I'm coming to terms with it basically. I don't know what I'm going to do with it when it starts to like when I get regrowth. I can't be half brown or half blue, but I don't want to dye it again. Do I dye it brown? But then I'm going to be like one of those old, you know, old guys that like they used to have black hair and then they went gray and then they dye it black and it just looks weird. You know what I mean? It just there's just something about it looks fucking off. That's going to be me. If I dye it brown, people are going to be like, yeah, he had brown hair, but like this looks weird. Is, is he wearing a, a toupee? What's, what the fuck's happening here? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm open to suggestions, but whatever. You know what I did like, right? On the positive side of things, you know what I did like about this whole thing? Guys, when I fucking bleached my hair, I always kind of was playing with the idea in my head of like, oh, maybe I'd like to do like a bleach hair thing at some point, right? Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I spent about four hours with bleach blonde hair. I looked fucking good. (laughs) <laughs> uh, that was a that was an absolute vibe, bro. I looked fucking nice. I think I looked great. I think that that is definitely a look. I mean, it's absolutely fuckboyish. Definitely a bit of a fuckboy Spears vibe, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm around that. I think I looked quite nice, and a lot of people agreed. Okay. Here's, here's the reaction. When I put, po- I thought, you know, I was blonde. I might as well post a photo of it of me, like halfway to blue. I put it on Instagram. I put it on fucking Facebook. Guys, people started to lose their minds a little bit. That's the 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 highest performing post I've done all year. I think 
Seven and a half thousand likes. That's insane for me. Normally my shit will hit like three or four. Seven and a half thousand? And it went nuts on Facebook. I think that Blonde Spears is a bit of a sexy cunt. And and here's why, okay? Uh, dude, DMs flooded. Reactions, fire emojis, hearts, girls, flooded, all right? Gay men, absolutely rushing me in second place behind the women, okay? I see all this shit. In the comments section, my DMs, I don't, I don't open them, but I fucking see them, okay? And the DMs were absolutely flooded with women and gay men. So, fuckboy Spears, anorexic Chad Kroger, Guy Fieri in a concentration camp, machine gun Felly down the stairs... That is an absolute vibe. It's a look for me, and I'm sorry if you disagree. You're actually incorrect. Now, I, I, I realize that there are a lot of there were an overwhelmingly positive reaction from the from members of the of the straight woman uh, uh, community and the gay man community, right? Uh, one one of those communities I frequently engage with. Uh, I'll let you decide <laughs> which one I'm talking about, right? So, I uh, am getting flooded by women and gay dudes when I'm posting the blonde picture of just me, people just saying that I look great. Gay men, I'm going to be honest, you're, you're a little bit gross. I, 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 when, whenever I, you know, as a straight guy and like women complain about how men hit on them and men are like gross and all this kind of stuff and you, and you kind of think, oh, I don't really do that to chicks, I... I don't really, I mean, is she exaggerating or is this like a, like guys, th that is us. It, it's not all of us, but it's a very big percentage because, uh, or at least that's, I feel like men being gross is almost our natural state. We have to beat that out of us. I think we can agree, right? That our, that our natural state before we kind of go, oh, maybe we should be, that's, is being gross is, is what comes naturally to us, and then we have to civilize ourselves. In the same way where a baby will chew with their mouth open, or they'll have food all over their hands, and they don't realize that touching somebody else is gross. They're just doing it because they just do it. I feel like that's what men are like when they're attracted to somebody else. They're just gross, and then we kind of go, oh, well, we shouldn't do that, and we pull it back, and we, and we, together as a society, agree that being fucking gross and being sex-obsessed and always talking to the people that we're attracted to about sex and fucking and all that kind of stuff is just not on, and it's not how we should be running a healthy society, and it's not very considerate of uh, women and, and people that we're attracted to. Now, uh, a, a big community that hasn't gotten on board with that at all is, is gay men. Because they don't need to. Because here's the thing with men and women. Men are fucking gross. Women are gross too, but in a subtle, secret way. In a, and, and in a way where they would prefer monogamy generally, right? So men are like, oh, I want to fuck everything. And then they come in contact with women and they're, and they're like, oh, I also want to fuck and be a whore. But, but can I just kind of pretend with the whole bit, I'd, I'd rather just have one boyfriend, right? That's, that's the difference. Whereas when men are attracted to other men who are also attracted to men, they go, I want to fuck everything. And then the other guy goes, what a coincidence, so do I. And they're just gross and it just works, right? And it doesn't hurt anybody. Except for me, when I read my DMs, when I dye my hair blonde, which, to be fair to all of the gay men out there, is a very gay hairstyle. <laughs> so I felt like a woman who always complains about how gross men are gave me a bit of perspective. You know what, guys? We're fucking gross. And a lot of us haven't learned to nut that out. P bad, bad choice of words. To iron that kink out better choice of words. That's why straight men sometimes fuck up because they just haven't been taught or they knowingly haven't ironed out that gross chimp lizard fuck, fuck everything instinct that's in all of our brains before we came in contact with women. 
some of us haven't ironed that out. Most of us, absolutely. But there are a couple of Ted Bundys in the mix. Gay dudes did, never needed to iron that shit out. I would say people who ironed that out would be a minority of men. Because it doesn't harm anyone. They're all into it. So they can be gross. And when they hit on me, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's gross. I feel like I'm, I'm getting uh, attacked by the homosexual patriarchy. The homatriarchy. <laughs> now, a big group that absolutely did not like the, uh, the blonde hair, right? I want to reiterate here, women loved it, gay men loved it. A big group here that absolutely hated the blonde spears... Uh, that were very aggressive in letting me know that they fucking hated it. Very mean, uh, very gross, and very rude. Uh, they, the way they were talking about my blonde hair. A big community that absolutely hated my blonde hair, even though the female community and the gay man community loved it. Uh, the straight male community aggressively hated blonde spears. Uh, I got some of the, the grossest meanest, most rude comments I've ever had on a post that was also one of the best performing posts in the world. And it wasn't all straight men. Most of them were uh, most of them were able to pass on a platonic compliment. Oh, this actually looks pretty good. Maybe you should do this later. But there was a significant portion of the straight male uh, community that absolutely fucking hated my blonde hair. Aggressively hated it. And I just wanted to say to the people that left disgusting, incredibly rude and aggressive comments about how much they hated my blonde hair, I would just like to say to you, hey man, if my photo made you a little bit horny, that's no reason to get angry at me, okay? It's fine. If seeing me blonde made you a little bit horny, you don't have to get angry at me. Maybe you're just a little bit gay. Not fully, maybe not even bi, but maybe you just maybe it just made you a little bit horny. And that's fine. Don't take it out on me because you might have a little bit of a gay tendency uh, and, and found me with blonde hair a little bit sexy. That's fine, bro. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no need to get angry at me. If that makes you angry, maybe you should have a think about who you are as a person and what makes your dick twitch. You know, if opening up Instagram and seeing me made your nuts do that thing, you know, the thing like when you go down a, a really steep hill and it goes, woo, and it feels a little bit horny. If seeing me blonde did that to your nuts, there's no need to take your anger out on me. Maybe that's just a, a, some repressed feelings coming out. You know, maybe that's something that you tried to bury that I've actually dug up with my blonde hair. There's no reason to get angry at me. Maybe you're just a little bit gay. That's fine. I'll accept you. I had lots of gay men in my DMs. I didn't tell them to fuck off. I wasn't aggressive with them. I took the compliment and I, I mean, I didn't even say thank you, but I took it graciously. There are a bunch of other straight dudes that said, oh, I don't like it or I do like it politely. If you're getting aggressive with me, maybe it's because I made your dick twitch and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's not an error. There's nothing wrong with being gay. I accept everyone. Maybe you should open yourselves up to, to new experiences. If that's what, if, if seeing me with blonde hair makes you aggressively angry, maybe it's because you're a little bit horny. And that's fine, okay? So I just like to make that clear to all of the uh, the closeted gay men that, that found me a little bit sexy. It's fine. And, and I forgive you, okay? If, if you got angry at that, that's totally fine. I forgive you. It's all good. And, and I hope you uh, become your true self and can accept your own inner feelings. Um, so that's what I'd like to say about that. That's that's uh, me and my hair, me and my aggressively sexy blonde hair. Uh, but unfortunately, that era is over. I I, I was uh, I went up a couple of points for about four hours the other day, and it was a great feeling. Uh, but it is it is all over now, and I have been humbled by my blue hair. Uh, so to all of those uh, aggressively angry straight dudes, it's all good, man. Obviously, the blue hair doesn't do it for you. Uh, so you're safe. You're safe for for a couple of couple of months until I have a have a crisis and go blonde, and then 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 you know maybe maybe a dick will twitch and you'll get angry at me. <laughs> oh fuck! I hope you guys are having a good week. Daniel Andrews has uh, lifted some restrictions. I can't remember if I said this, but I. I feel like I thought this, that they would lift a bunch of stuff that's like... They would lift restrictions on paper, right? Nothing's really changed. I mean, you can get your hair cut. That's, that's great for my mum. 
she's a hairdresser and, and uh, my barber. Unfortunately, the guy that I go to is more than 25 kilometers away, so I guess I'm fucked. And I don't know about you, but I don't think Frankston is known for its trendy barbers. I have uh, did some Googling. I didn't see anything promising, so I think I will have to suffer. Uh, not that I would want to... Like, what, like, what the fuck am I going to do in a barber? Hey, man, can you uh, fix this? I don't know what they would do with this. It's unsalvageable. I I, at this point, I don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have shoulder length, half blue, half blonde hair. Half. It's like brown, blonde, and blue. I look like some weird fucking Cadbury chocolate promotional that lasts like two months and doesn't sell very well. They put it on special and it still ends up in the bin. That's what I feel like at the moment. Um. I've been uh, I've been trying to enjoy my quarantine uh, more, and uh, and uh, I've been watching some shit. Streaming's obviously a lot of fun. I've been playing a video, bit of video games. I start. I picked up Squad that came out. It's like a realistic military simulator almost. And I always like uh, when I was younger, I was like, man, that looks so fucking boring. I would like watch gameplay, and it would be an hour of dudes pretending they're in the military. And, and it's like shit like where if you get shot once, you just die. You can't see... There's no mini-map where you can see enemies. It's like it's like real, right? Where it's like if you get shot, you die. You don't charge in like Rambo or you'll just fucking die. You can't get revived if you die. If you do die, it's just black. Uh, and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And there's a limited amount of bullets and reloading takes time. And all this kind of stuff. And I would look at that and i go, that's the most boring shit ever. Why the fuck would I want to play that? Um, and then I kind of got sick of Battlefield, and I got sick of Warzone, and so I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Squad came out, and people were saying it was the best uh, military simulator, realistic-esque shit that's, that's come out in a while. So I'm like, oh, I'll at least try it, you know? Now that video games are a work expense, I'll, ch I'll, I'll write that off, you know? <laughs> so I tried it, and bro, I fucking love it. I was literally up until 4.30 in the morning last night playing that shit. I started playing it at 7pm. My girlfriend didn't get to sleep until 3am because I kept screaming on the mic, Our Enemy spotted at 203, southwest of our position. 203, exactly behind the rock. Enemy spotted. Uh, and it is fucking phenomenal. Because it's so boring, right? Because it's so high stakes, where if you get hit once, you fucking die. If you run out like Rambo, you fucking die. If you don't keep track of your ammo, you fucking die. If you don't listen to the commander who's giving orders to your squad leader, who is then giving orders to you, you fucking die. And you lose the game. It's, it's so good because it's so boring. It elevates everything. Everything is so much of a higher stakes situation. Every encounter. It's fucking awesome. I've been thoroughly enjoying it. And what's good about it is every single cunt in those games, for the most part, are playing it how it's supposed to be played, or at least trying to. There are some people that are new and shit, like me, obviously. But everyone pretty much is trying to play it how it's supposed to be played, how the designers intended it to be played. Because, you know, with, like, um, with, like, real popular fucking McDonald's games like Call of Duty or Battlefield or or arcade-esque shooters or uh, Counter-Strike or whatever, like sometimes the developers will be like, we want to create the best team-based squad fucking game. Battlefield's probably a better example where teamwork wins the game or whatever. Like they design it in a specific way and then it releases and the people, the players are like, now nah, fuck that, I reckon. I'm, I reckon instead of, you know, working together as a squad and using our mics and uh, overcoming the opposition, I reckon I'm, let's just, everyone go sniper, sit at the back and fucking take pot shots and fuck the objective, right? That's the vibe of a lot of these other team-based shooters. There's no teamwork. Or you're in war zone, you're in a squad, one cunt runs off, the other cunt goes off, and then you're, you're left with one other dude who wants to play it properly, uh, but then you die, uh, and then the other two call you shit, even though they're not fucking part of your squad, right? That frustrating shit. Squad, the game literally is called Squad, for the most part, uh, every game that I've played, everyone's working together and uh, teamwork and dropping ammo for each other and asking and every single cunt in the game has a mic as well, which I love. 
Um, really, really, really cool. I fucking love it, and uh, I've been thrashing that. Uh, and I've noticed uh, the player base is a little bit older. No weird cunts, no annoying cunts, uh, and there's heaps of banter. It's fucking really cool. And I think there are actually a lot of actual real war veterans that play the game as well. I haven't encountered any, but looking at YouTube comments from war vets uh, saying, man, this is just like when I served here or whatever. It's cool. It's really, really cool. Um, so I recommend that. That's what I've been doing recently. I also fucking... Dude, I also watched, uh, just finished season two of The Boys. I, I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast anyway. Uh, no spoilers, by the way. Uh, that fucking series is so fucking good. If you don't have Amazon Prime, uh, get it. And then, when you do have Amazon Prime, sub to me on Twitch. It's fucking free, and I get money. It doesn't cost you anything if you have a Prime sub. Um, that's not what I'm saying. It's, I just want you guys to fucking... Watch The Boys. It's incredible. It's uh, a series based on a comic book series called The Boys uh, by my favorite ever comic book uh, uh, author, uh, Garth Ennis. He's he, Garth Ennis is like uh, he comes from like a working class uh, background, and his stuff is filthy, gory, full of swear words, always saying cunt. His characters are terrible people, and he's created The Boys, which is like. Uh, it's kind of like, oh, what if superheroes were in the real world? Uh, but it's also a little bit of a satire of America in general. He's not American, and his stuff is very critical of America all the time. So uh, I'm, I'm going to, as somebody who read the comics and, and, and shit, I think that going into it, if you, if you know these few things, it makes this, the, uh, the series so much better. So the series is uh, a criticism of superhero comics and the superhero genre and superhero movies uh it's also a satire of them but it's also if you watch it it becomes more and more clear that the boys is like a really big critique on the american military uh and how if you know we did create super soldiers it wouldn't be or if we did if superheroes were real uh and and we had the ability to train them and 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 have them be born or, or whatever they wouldn't actually stop crime. They would just be commercialized exactly like uh, celebrities and superhero movies are today, right? If there was this guy that could fly and shoot laser beams out of his eyes and all this kind of stuff, he probably wouldn't be out there every fucking day saving people for no reasons, especially if there's no, like, supervillains. It's just, it's, there's no... There's no, like, at, at this point anyway, there's no aliens or there's no monsters. It's just super-powered people in the real world. And, and they're kind of, like, pitched as... Pitched to the populace as these people that are helping them and saving them and, and are superheroes. But they're actually, in reality, not doing anything. They're just being marketed as such to sell merch, to sell tickets to movies about them, sell books and all that kind of bullshit... They're just like celebrities with powers that are owned by a corporation that whores them out for money, basically. Uh, and, and it's super, super interesting. And it, it's like a critique on American culture. And then, of course, you know, the next logical conclusion when you have these super powered individuals is how the fuck can we get these cunts into the military, into war, you know, into dominating the world, basically. And, it, and it, it, it slowly becomes this critique uh, of the American military and, and American culture and, uh, uh, and I suppose, like, extreme capitalism as well, which is really, really interesting and, and, and such a... It's, and it's done in a way that's not forced at all. Uh, and, and if you watch it, there are, like, characters in there, not all of them, but there are characters in there that, that are semi-based on people that are like famous today like there's in season two there's a female politician that's almost certainly like a send-up of AOC uh there's elements of Homelander the main superhero or the main superhero guy that that seemed to be a, a little bit Trumpy um especially more so in season two um but it's it's done in a way that's not cringe because you know when so when when people are we're gonna fucking parody Trump's campaign and fan base it's like always it's always fucking cringe, 
Uh, but uh, this is done in a really nice way that's not forceful or anything. It's like, it's not telling you to think anything. It's just making fun of everything, which is kind of the, the comic book, you know? The Garth Ennis, he's not American. He's making fun of it. And, and the main character, Butcher, this is also going to make it a lot better for you, right? Uh, the main ca character, Butcher, is supposed to be like a working class English guy in the comics, right? So he says cunt, he's filthy, he's a bad dude, he's real tough. Um, but his thing, he's played by an Australian guy. So uh, I think episode one and two, he does the uh, uh, English Cockney uh, working class accent really well. And then in subsequent episodes, it just starts to slip. And he says cunt all the time in a really Australian way. So I, in my own head, have just kind of uh, made the guy Australian, like he is in real life. And I go, oh, this cunt's fucking Australian. And it's made it, the viewing experience so much better, because he's out there in America with all these fucking corporate cunts, calling them corporate cunts. And it's great. It's really good. It reminded me of me when I was there. Him just calling people cunts or saying good cunt or whatever. Or saying cunt in a positive way. And all of these people getting incredibly offended. Him, and him going, what? It's a good thing. Reminded me of when I was in fucking America. It's um, such a good fucking series. And season two, so much better than the first one. Uh, where it ended, like, fucking blew my mind. And if you've seen it, that's a very funny joke. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's basically what I've been doing, leisure-wise, uh, with my fucking time. Uh, oh, we've been going for about 40 minutes here. I reckon it's uh, time for the worst part of the podcast, miscellaneous bit at the end. Before we get into that, I will pitch my Patreon to you. If you want to support what I do, I've got no sponsors at the moment. Uh, I've got no shows. If you want to support what I do, if you get value out of this podcast, if you want to help me fund it and, and help uh, me pay the people that are helping get all of this kind of stuff out to you, uh, Patreon is absolutely the best way to do it. Um, so Patreon, Google Lewis Spears Patreon, you get an extra uh, episode of Spearhead Sundays every single week. I just continue on. Uh, we've decided to call it either uh, this the Sunday Supplement or uh, Spearhead Seconds uh, or Sunday Seconds. Sunday Seconds or Spearhead Supplement, something like along the lines of that. It's just more of this and I let loose even more because there's, you know, there's not even any fucking YouTube rules on Patreon any, either. Uh, there's no ads or anything like that. So I go a bit fucking wild and talk about stuff that I suppose uh, I maybe think, oh, people won't really get this unless they're super hardcore fans. So if you really enjoy this, uh, Patreon's the way to do it. Uh, with that said, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. Worst part of the podcast is the part where I answer live advice questions sent in by you, the loyal listener. If you uh, have a story to tell me, if you uh, want me to know something, if you uh, have any content you think would be good for the podcast, if you have any life advice questions that need answering, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. That is podcast at loosebeers.com. Just summarize it in the subject line and please try and write it coherently, please. All right. Here we go. How to talk to people who are short. <laughs> hey, Lewis, I'm a 13 year old student in Victoria. You shouldn't be listening to this, bro. And I go to a school where everyone in my year is in year seven. The fuck do you mean? I go to a school where everyone in my year is in year seven. So you're also in year seven? The fuck does that mean? I go to a school where everyone in my year is in year seven. So you are in year seven? Is that what you're saying, dude? That's the weirdest way to say you're in year seven. Anyway... Yeah, you're 13, you're in year 7. That's fucking... Of course everyone in your year would be in your year. That's weird. Anyway, I'm a six, I am 6 foot tall, you're big. And my nicknames at school are Lanky Boy and Spidey Fingers, which I don't really care about. Uh, but I find it hard to hear when people speak. Oh, bro, you've come to the right person. I struggle with this all the time. So when I'm having a conversation, I tend to either bob down or bend over. Evidently, I have been... 
kicked in the shins a couple of times for people saying I'm being condescending. Uh, these are from people I don't really know properly, but it still annoys me. It just makes me think uh, I could make people feel insecure about their height by just having a conversation. Is there a better way to be able to hear people other than bobbing down or bending over? If there's not another way, I would love to know how tall you were at 13, just because I've been curious. I love your stuff from Harvey. Um, yeah, bro, this is something that uh, if you continue to be tall. So when I was in year seven, I was like you. I was really big compared to everyone else. And then this there was this weird time from like year... Year 9 to year 11, I wasn't that big. And then I hit 18 and I fucking exploded. Like, I was huge and then people caught up. And then I was massive again and now I'm here. I'm 6 foot 8. So, I'm going to be real with you, Harvey. If you continue to grow and if you end up as tall as someone like me, if you're 6'3 or 6'4, it's not really a problem. 6'8, six, 6'7 six, or 8, it's a constant issue and it will never change. Um... There is no way, because, okay, this is something that's so unrelatable to people who are not fucking massive or not really short, but think of it this way. If you're a girl and you're five foot three, I'm six foot eight, right? So your mouth is here. Mine, my ears are all the way up there. Five foot three, six foot eight. What's that? That's a foot and a half away. Imagine, this is more of a problem in busy areas, but me talking to someone who's 5'3 in public is like standing in a busy street and standing a foot and a half away from each other, right? And talking at a normal volume. You can't hear each other. You're going to catch bits and pieces, but you're literally too far away. That's something that, is, that I have to deal with all the time. And I'm going to be real with you, Harvey. There is no way to get closer to someone without coming across as a creep. I'm going to tell you right now. You don't have to slouch. They have to talk up, okay? Don't lean over people. Do not slouch. Don't put your hands on your knees. One, it looks fucking weird. Two, it puts you in a weak frame. You look like a bitch. Three, it's going to fuck up your neck and your spine. Something that's so important when you're really tall is making a conscious, conscious effort to have good posture, to stand up straight, keep your chin up. Because if you do not do that, you're going to have migraines all day, you're going to have a fuck spine, and you're going to, you look, going to look like a banana, and you just look unconfident and like a beta. You want to have that alpha energy. You're tall, stand up straight, fill your space. Be you. Look like a normal fucking human. You don't have to be bending over to people just so you can hear them. They need to speak up. And you need to, obviously not in a rude way, just go, hey, can you guys, can you speak up? Um, another thing is maybe get your hearing checked uh, because I feel like uh, you're only six foot. I don't know how much bigger you are than other people, but I don't remember being that much bigger to the point where I couldn't hear. It only really became a problem with girls when I'm this high. Because uh, girls also like they talk, um, they talk quieter and uh, higher frequencies travel less. That's why when you're in your house, you can always hear your fucking dad talking through the walls. Uh, because yeah, that's just how sound works. Um, so you just need to cut that shit out, and you need to speak up. Something that I also do is uh, sit on a table. Uh, just sit, you know. If you're talking here in a classroom, there's tables everywhere. Just lean on that a little bit. Sometimes I'll lean against a wall a little bit, you know, crouch down a t teeny bit, get a bit closer like that. But ultimately, you just have to... I mean, it's funny. That's what I do. It's like, it's like hey, you're going to have to speak up. We're too far away. Uh, and then they'll laugh, and then you laugh with them, and then it's funny. Um, and then, you know, just explain what I explain. Like, you know, your mouth is here. My ears are up here. That's like us... When you put it... When it's like fucking vertical, it doesn't really make sense to people. When you put it in a horizontal plane, it makes more sense. So if you go, your mouth is here, my ears are here, that's like your mouth being here, me standing here. It's too far away to have a conversation. Um, so you got to speak up. That's my advice to you, bro. That's, that's what I do anyway. But yeah, don't fucking stand like a bitch. And that goes for everyone. Girls, guys... Uh, everyone, you see that with like 
like girls who have like huge tits, they kind of slouch or because they want to hide them or or, or or even girls that uh, are just like not confident, they fucking they like stand inwards and <clears throat> blocked off and it it just it makes it so much worse and it's bad for your back and you look unconfident, you don't look good and 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 you also feel worse doing that. When you stand up properly and when you fill your space uh, and you hold your frame and you stand like a fucking human and you look more confident, all of a sudden you start acting more confident. People start noticing that you're being more confident. You become more attractive. You become uh, more talkable too. Uh, and it just leads it just leads in general to good things in life. Every, every small little thing that you can do to make yourself seem approachable, seem confident, even if at first you're faking, which you, everyone all but always does, almost always everyone is faking it when they're learning how to become confident. You fake it till you make it. All of a sudden, it becomes you. Um, it's all in your head, dude. That's my advice, anyway. Guys, girls, stand the fuck up. All right, here we go. Um, all right, this one, I have to change the name. This one comes in from Sarah. My colleague is a conspiracy nutcase. Great. Hey, Lewis, I love the show. Keep up the great work. How do I deal with a colleague in the office who is a conspiracy nutter? She will not s shut up about how the 1% elite are selling their souls to Satan to run a child sex trafficking ring. Members include Madonna and Donald Trump. I thought Donald Trump was supposed to be bringing that to an end. Isn't that what they believe? COVID-19 is a hoax used by the Illuminati and the government to keep us all locked up under martial law. And she boasts about refusing to wear a mask when asked to. <coughs> Laser temperature gauges are used on the forehead. Laser temperature gauges used on the forehead are actually infrared technology to alter our consciousness. It's all part of their agenda. And any vaccines released will be used to sterilize people, obviously. She says she will not stop until we wake up. Any advice is appreciated. Fuck, that's a... Uh... So this is an insane person, basically. <clears throat> this is a, someone who is literally insane. Uh, I'm fucking losing my voice here. Screaming, screaming about straight men want to fuck me has ruined my voice. This is a difficult one because this person is fucking nuts. Clearly, like the, the, some of these, all, cause all of these conspiracies have like a kernel of truth to them, which is the 1% elite are selling their souls to Satan to run a child sex trafficking ring. That's not true. What is true is the 1% elite are fucking over other people to hoard power for themselves. And a lot of them are fucking kids. That is true, right? We know that to be true. Epstein and then just general 1% <laughs> right? Um, COVID-19 is a complete hoax used by the Illuminati and the government to keep us all locked down under martial law. Okay, so that one's not true. It is it is real. It was not used by the Illuminati. Uh, what, what I do think is also true is governments will use this as a way to get more power. They will do that. I mean, that was 9-11. That happened. Uh, the fucking Patriot Act came about because of 9-11 and the, the fucking Iraq War, which was just bullshit. That, they capitalized on it. It's not, not real, but they are, they, they will capitalize on it. You know, they're gonna, they will use this shit to install surveillance and to ask for powers to, you know, monitor people. That's stuff that will happen. Less so in, in Australia. I haven't seen too much of that in Australia. There's some worrying shit, but... You know, it, it, that will happen. That that's that is true. But I, but it's not. They haven't invented it to do that. They're just capitalizing on it. Like I don't. We're not that organized. And also, I don't think they want to keep us locked up under martial law. Uh, that is not productive. That doesn't make people money. You know. You look at China. Those cunts aren't locked up. I mean, a good portion of them are for thought crime. But as a whole, they want them working themselves to death. For money and power. That's what the elites want. They don't want us locked in our homes, rotting. And they don't want to sterilize us. What, the end goal is to destroy all human life? Why? What's the goal there? Why? Because... No, you want everyone fucking heaps. 
and everyone working heaps and everyone kept in poverty so you can have more power for yourselves. That's the game, right? This person is fucking insane. Um, she says she will not stop until we wake up. Honestly, if I was if I was working with with one of these people and I was in a fucking office and there were there were these one there were these anti mask people and all this kind of stuff and they were talking about going with I would just I would honestly just send an email to HR anonymously. Only do this shit anonymously because here's the thing about HR: they don't work for you; they work for the company. They're not there to protect you. They talk about oh HR is to make you feel safe. No, they're not. That is a that is a uh, fortunate for you byproduct of what they're there for. They are there to protect the company from being sued. The only reason they don't want you to get raped in, during office hours is so they don't get sued. Not to protect your pussy, unfortunately. HR is not to protect you. It's to protect the business, right? So be very very careful when talking to HR because they're not your friend, right? You always see these stories like, oh, I reported this heinous activity to HR and they just fucking silenced me to protect the business. It's like, yes, that's what they're fucking employed to do. You've been tricked. It's not good. It's reality. I would send anonymous emails to HR and whoever the fuck you think could change this and say, look, Sarah, this person is uh, endangering the, the rest of the office by going out not wearing masks, bringing COVID back into the office. I don't feel safe working with them. Either they need to be made to work remotely or you need to sort out a fucking remote office thing or for me, or you need to fucking talk to this person and get rid of them. Because uh, one, right? You, I mean, that's that's the thing. Like, I don't know if you have contact with your grandparents or people live with them. It's like, it's 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 one thing to put yourself at risk Sure, if you live by yourself, if you don't work with other people and you want to take a risk with COVID and you don't want to wear a mask, I, I actually think that's, that's fine, right? It becomes a problem when you take that risk upon yourself and you start spreading it in your workplace, you start spreading it in supermarkets and stuff like that. It's, it's not good. That's, that's the shit that, that annoys me and that's why, you know the fucking virus got so bad here in Melbourne when we opened up was because people just didn't give a fuck anymore. Uh, and the case started going crazy and people start going to supermarkets and shopping centers. It does affect everyone. So it's like, I'm like, sure, if you want to take that risk for you, that's fine. The problem is doing that is impossible, right? Because you will give it to someone else. So having these people around, it's like, Cool, I would like to see my grandma again. I haven't seen her all year. I've been FaceTiming her and, and buying books online for her because she can't go to the library anymore. So I would like to see her again. And if I'm working, if I was if I was in your position, Sarah, and this cunt was unmasked, bragging about it, going everywhere with no mask, even if restrictions open up, I'd be like, well, fuck, I can't even see my grandma because she might give it to me and then I might give it to grandma before I even realize that I have it. So... No mercy. I would fucking anonymously report that cunt to HR or the boss and say, look, it's making me feel unsafe. It's dangerous. Uh, and also, if I'm the boss and I got a crazy anti-masker, guess what happens if everyone in my office gets COVID? I'm going to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm going to go get that bitch the fuck out of the office. Unless he's also like that. That's what I would do. Anonymously. Um, that's my advice. Anyway. All right. I think we're going to wrap up here. I think that's the, uh, the end of this episode. If you want to continue, if you want more Spearhead Sundays, uh, there is a top link in the YouTube version. Top, there's a link in the comments, uh, of the YouTube version, uh, and also in your podcasting app. I think there will be a link as well. Otherwise, just Google Lewis Spears Patreon. I'm going to continue on, uh, keep on doing this, this episode, uh, of the podcast. But until then... The, uh, this, this episode is over. The Spearhead Supplement or uh, Sunday something. I can't remember what the fuck we called it. Uh, it was going to continue on. And uh, yeah, man, I uh, hope you guys have a good week. Hope you make the most of the lifted restrictions if you can. Uh, in a safe way anyway. And uh, thank you for listening. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow on Monday. Uh, live on Twitch. I'm going to be playing Phasmophobia. Uh, uh, horror game. Never played it. Uh, not even going to do the tutorial beforehand. So uh, I hope you enjoy that. I'll see you there. And uh, thank you very much.
goodbye and have a shit one.